swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing. Always call it for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver. shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thy own. It shall be the royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At the feet, it's treasure so. Take my self, and I will be ever Brothers and sisters, you are most welcome to this morning service in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and also be with you. If a wicked person turns away from the weaknesses he or she has committed and does what is just and right, he or she will serve his or her life. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Beloved in Christ, we have come together to offer to Almighty God our worship, praise, and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear and receive his proclaimed holy word, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. The Bible tells us not to hide our sins from God, our Heavenly Father, but to confess them with a repentant and obedient heart so that we may receive his forgiveness in our lives. Let us therefore sit or kneel to confess our sins to Almighty God. General Confession, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us sing a hymn and the ministry of the word. Yeah. 
The epistle reading is from Acts of Apostles, chapter 6, reading begins at verse 1. The seven helpers. Some time later, as the number of disciples kept growing, there was a quarrel between the Greek-speaking Jews and the native Jews. The Greek-speaking Jews claimed that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of funds. So that the 12 apostles called the whole group of believers together and said, It is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle finances. So then, brothers, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And we will put them in charge of this matter. We ourselves then will give our full time to prayer and the work of preaching. The whole group was pleased with the apostles' proposal. So they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a Gentile from Antioch who had highly been converted to Jerusalem. The group presented them to apostles who prayed and placed their, hand, their hands on them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading is according to St. Luke, chapter 15. Reading begins at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Savior. The Lordship. One day, 
when many tax collectors and the outcasts came to listen to Jesus, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law started grumbling. This man welcomes outcasts and even eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has hundreds of sheep and loses one of them. What does he do? He leaves the other 99 sheep in the pasture and goes looking for the one that got lost until he finds it. When he finds it, he is so happy that he puts it on his shoulders and carries it back home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says to them, I am so happy I found my lost sheep. Let us celebrate in the same way. I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectable people who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman who has 10 silver coins loses one of them. What does she do? She lights a lamp, sweep, sweeps her house, and looks carefully everywhere until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says to them, I am so happy I found the coin I lost. Let us celebrate in the same way I tell you the angels of God rejoice over one sinner who repents. Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread all over that country and he was left without thing, a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of the country of that country who sent him out of his, out to his farm to take care of the the pigs he wished he could fill himself with the bean pots the pigs had but no one gave him anything to eat at last he came to his senses and said all my father's hired workers have more than they can, they can eat. And here I am about to starve. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Savior. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for this day of today that the Lord has enable us to be alive and to listen to his word. Despite of all the challenges, the hardship, but the goodness of the Lord, his presence and his love is always available to all those who listen to him. Let's pray together. God, our loving and heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praises for who you are to us and in our life as we gather to listen to your word come in the power of your holy spirit prepare our hearts and minds to receive your words in jesus name i pray amen our theme for today is bearing much fruit the reason we plant fruit trees is in order to get fruits from it. In the same way, being a Christian is for bearing much fruits of good deeds. 
whether in dry season or in wet season. Psalms 1 verse 2 talks of good people or of Christians as a tree that is planted by the riverside. It bears fruit in all seasons and the leaves that does not fall. So it is the same thing that is expected of all Christians. We do understand that the world at the moment is suffering from the pandemic, economic hardships, and many other challenges. But the Lord Jesus Christ expects Christians to continue to bear good fruits. In John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 8, the Lord Jesus said, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Jesus said these words after eating the Last Supper with his disciples, washing their feet, then he took them for a walk in the grove trees, seeing the fruits on the trees, then he said to them these words, you must bear much fruit and love one another. Those were the two important words that were said by our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that word continues to be relevant in all generations and especially in our time. This is a time that Christians are expected to bear much fruit. Those fruits are actually the fruits of obedience to God's words. The fruits of actions of love towards one another. All Christians are supposed at this difficult moment to demonstrate love, to demonstrate care, to demonstrate good deed towards one another. Saint Paul in Galatians 5 verse 22 talks of such fruits of the Spirit. As he lists them, he starts with love, with joy, peace, patience, and he continues on. Amidst of all challenges, we are expected as Christians to do our role in exercising our God-given gifts in love with joy and patience. Or otherwise, the devil might come in and confuse us and divide us and make us to be Christians who are timid, to be Christians who are complaining a lot, to be Christians who are so fearful and to be Christians who murmur. In the book of Acts, chapter 6, from verse 1, as we read from the, big, the first chapters, the second chapter, the third, we read of the good things that happened in the early church. The unity of Christians together, the spirit of sharing, the spirit of fellowship, but somewhere in the middle, the devil came in and confused them. Then they began to murmur. They began to complain. They began to divide. Or in our language today, tribalism entered in when they were dividing food. So there was clearly that division which was mentioned the Greek widows, the Jewish widows, and the other groups. That is the work of the devil because of the hardship. But today I want to encourage all of us that we should continue to stand strong and produce the fruit of the Spirit in our life. In the early church, with all those complaints, they thought wise to select 
seven men to handle such challenges. And when they sat down and put the criteria that the men needed were men of integrity. Because handling food, handling money, handling resources needed integrity. They also thought the quality needed was men full of the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, they thought of wisdom, people with wisdom, to be able to advise, to be able to guide, to be able to look into situations critically with wisdom. These seven men worked well, but we don't know. The Bible is silence about five, but we know of the two. Stephen, he was bold enough, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood for Jesus Christ until his death. And we continue to remember him, St. Stephen Day, the first martyr for Christ. And then the second person we remember among the seven is Philip, who was obedient enough, was able to be sent from a city in Jerusalem to take the Gaza road and was able to baptize the Ethiopian eunuch. And he did much for the Lord. But the other five, we don't know about them. The Bible is silent. Maybe they are mentioned somewhere that we do not know. Or maybe they were not bold enough to produce the fruits of the Spirit or to bear much fruits. Today in our church and in our time, we are sensing the same thing that there are murmuring, complaints, division, and tribalism in our churches. We need the seven deacons in our time. We need men and women of wisdom in our time. We need people who are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in our time. And we need men and women of integrity. Because as all the groups within our churches, we look at our young people, we see murmuring, we see complaints. We look at our women, the mother's union. We look at our laity. And we look at our Christians who are serving out there with the organizations in the government. We see many other challenges, difficulties, temptations that needs a life of integrity that needs wisdom, that needs a person to be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I encourage all our Christians, all our faithful who are listening, the Lord expects you to bear much fruits. The Lord expects you to demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit in your life. The Lord expects you during this time of difficulties, time of coronavirus, that you demonstrate in your life. Let people know that you belong to Jesus Christ. Let people know the wisdom you have in handling even the guidelines put forward by the Minister of Health. Be an example to others. Let people know how you handle the little resources that you have, how you share them within your family, how you share them with your neighbors. Let people know in all the challenges, wherever you are, that you are a man and woman of integrity. We are to bear much fruit. And may the Lord help us, may the Lord enable us, and may the Lord fill us with that spirit, that ability that we each be like a tree that is planted by the riverside and bears fruit in all seasons. Think of your life. 
Think of your Christian journey. Think of what you go through. Are you bearing fruits or you are becoming dry? With these words, I pray that you will be in position of bearing much fruit that will benefit your church, that will benefit your community, and that will benefit the whole people of God where you are. And that will make the name of God be glorified. May his spirit and presence be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us kneel. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. May our bishops and all our church leaders have wisdom to teach and preach your word. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the leaders of our country rule with justice and righteousness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May our country have peace and our people live in harmony. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May our flock and hearts prosper and the fish and other edible creatures of the water abound in our rivers. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May our fields produce plentiful harvest and other forests produce plenty of honey and fruits. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the spirit of true forgiveness fill our hearts to reconcile with all those who have wronged us. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May all our children grow mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially under your protection with wisdom for a good future. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the people of the world experience your love and peace in their different situations. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us join the morning prayer together. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For our intercession, let us pray for our church, the Episcopal Church of South Sudan, and the whole entire church in the world. Let us remember our country, the Republic of South Sudan and its leaders. Let us remember the sick and the suffering. And let us remember especially those who are in the hospitals, at home, wherever they are, so that the good Lord may visit them. And let us also remember for those who are brief, they lost their dear ones. Almighty God, we pray for the church throughout the world, and more especially the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. Grant to our primate, Dr. Justin Badi Arama, we want to remember the internal as bishops, the bishops, priests, and all leaders and Christians in our churches. Your life-giving spirit of wisdom and understanding help all Christians to practically serve and live to the standard of your teachings. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, creator and preserver of all humankind, bless the people of South Sudan, reconcile those who are divided, relieve the hungry and oppressed, help and guide our president, General Salva Kid Mayardit, all the ministers, 
the legislators, the arm and the government officials, and those whom you have put into position, the executive, the judiciary, and all other leaders to work for peace, unity, and prosperity of your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember those who are sick in the hospital. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are sick and those who are facing difficulties. Help them to know your love that they may seek strength from you and find peace and healing in your presence. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the, faith, the painted hearted, defend and protect the widows, widowers and orphans, deliver the captives and those whom we have forgotten, for you are the helper of the helpless and the savior of the lost. I want to remember the people in Jongole, want to remember the people everywhere in South Sudan, those who are caught up with the conflict. We pray that you reveal your power and kindness to each one of them according to your merciful loving kindness and eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to pray for the families that have lost their dear ones. Give faith and comfort, O Lord, to all who are bereaved. I want to remember the families that have lost their dear ones. May you comfort and strengthen them in this spirit of grief. Strengthen them to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those whom without hope, but in the thankful remembrance of your mercy and the hope of resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all join the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant thy request. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, the petitions, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. As we conclude our service today, our Lord Jesus Christ wants all of us to bear much fruit. So let's go out, continue amidst of all the challenges to produce fruits of the Spirit in our life and in all we do. Let's pray together. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Jesus is